Now Richard Simmons is dead. Now it's it's kind of odd to me that both McDougal and uh, Richard Simmons died on a Saturday. Both died before 80. Both were health advocates that did not push keto or carnivore. Kind of odd, I don't know. You know, I, I started, I started re reading about Richard Simmons and uh, what might have caused his death. He really didn't talk about it all that much from what I could see, but he did have some kind of skin thing that, that was cancerous and he went to a dermatologist and they said he got to go see a skin doctor and he burned it off or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. And I guess Richard Simmons was keeping out of the, the limelight lately. So you know, maybe because he was having health issues. I have no idea. I do believe that both McDougal and Richard Simmons both did the experiment. So that might have something to do with this. And I maintain that the day you leave here is the day you leave here regardless of what you do because you everything that you were going to do was already known before you got here i'm never going to change my mind on that you can leave as many comments as you as you need to if it makes you feel better go for it but the day you're supposed to leave here is the day you're going to leave here and i'm going to say the same thing in that i did in the mcdougal video is that these people whether they live to 80 or not they at least did what they loved to do and they spread a message out there. And from my remembrance, actually, my cousin, is, who is very overweight, she actually um, employed Richard Simmons to come to her house for, I forget how long, and to help my aunt and her lose weight and he was successful in doing so. So he did actually have some relevance I guess within my own you know external family I never really got into them and a lot of those weird exercises I, I you know I never did any of that kind of stuff I never did any of the you know calisthenics point of this video is I did look into his diet he recommended seven servings of fruit and vegetables a day plus two servings of uh, dairy I guess a day and not to go under 1200 calories and I think a lot of what we're seeing is people who are starving themselves and actually if you uh, if you know who Georgie Dinkoff is he was talking about some of this cancer and skin cancer and, and stuff in one of the latest interviews he did I don't remember which one it is but if you do watch his videos you'll 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 have seen that and I've also uh, made a video about skin cancer myself that it went up like 1500 percent after sun sunscreen came around so do with that what you, what you will I, I just I, I find it some of the stuff kind of it's kind of getting a little odd that no no doctor who preaches about health who doesn't preach what current day medical jargon has rarely makes it past 80. I find, I find that kind of odd. You know, you, you look at Gerson, you look at kind of the other, and I'm not saying that their diets were bad. I'm saying that if they don't match what medical industry is telling them, they don't make it to a certain age. And another thing is like, even on this channel and even some of the bigger channels that talk about health, we have all been kind of shadow banned in some capacity if we don't talk about keto and carnivore. And even some of the people who talk about keto and carnivore are talking about their views are way down. So I don't know, it seems a lot of, a lot of things are going on. There was also the experiment that may have a lot to do with this. I don't know, it's unfortunate, but one of the things I actually cut myself off is like a lot of these doctors are preaching about low calorie. And if you look at some of the videos that that Kath, Catherine Stewart, the Strong Sisters, and a couple of other people are doing, are the baseline calories for women back in 1941 was like 2,500 to 2,700. And for men, it was like 3,000 to 3,200. And they were skinny and they weren't having these diseases that we're finding these days. The only time that they were having these diseases is mostly the men and mostly the men because they were working in factories without any kind of protective anything whatsoever. And so they were going and working with these harsh chemicals every day. And they were still living into their 80s and 90s. Like I, my family has most, mostly been pencil pushers, you know, pretty high up their jobs. But I have had some people in my family 
that did work like factories and stuff and they are always the ones that got the cancers but they still lived into their 80s some of them into their 90s and they their appetites were so it was it was this weird dynamic at at, at like at, like a thanksgiving or something like or a christmas or an easter or something like that when we actually did go hang out with family the older people usually ate more than the younger people and the you, younger people are usually fat you kind of got to piece all this stuff together if these health gurus are telling you to eat very minimal calories and they themselves are not making it to a certain age and now a lot of the protein warriors are going to come out here and i'm going to talk about that in a minute but if they are making it there themselves like mcdougall clearly was emaciated he looked really bad like when i did that interview with him he was very very like sickly slender and i'm like something you know it's like I, I don't know and then he was trying to tell me because of my height and whatever that i'm supposed to be 155 pounds like i don't I don't want it way that little. It, that would look ridiculous. The last thing I think I'm gonna talk about here is this idea of high protein. So there was this doctor who also was in a car accident and didn't make it, who was talking about protein and how we don't need it. So, and I did a video about this. I think I might've done two videos about this, but he was talking about the idea that of this study that was done back in the day of rats, mice, and humans, where they would starve them and their life expectancy would increase. But their life, their, their life wasn't that great. They, were, they had a lot of diseases, they had a lot, had a lot of issues. Then there was another study, it's like maybe, maybe it's not the starving, maybe it's something else. So there was another study done to, by this guy that got in a car accident, didn't survive, who was talking about protein and they did kind of the, the exact same experiment, but instead of starving these mice, rats and humans and whatever else, they would let them eat whatever they wanted to, but they would make their protein low. And the protein would be very low and they actually had better results and better life expectancy than the ones that were starving themselves. And this is a threat to the modern day literature that's coming out about this high protein thing they and then another thing in the china study they could literally turn on and off cancer with how much protein animal protein was in these rats diets or mice whatever they could control if whether or not these mice had mice rats whatever had cancer depending on how, what percent of their diet was from protein and i think 20 percent and over would trigger cancer and like i forget what it was like eight percent or less would it would just go away take that for what you will i you know a lot of this is, is getting and and also i keep saying this but another thing like when i dropped dairy like when i first went started going into the vegan vegetarian world because my my i smelled like i'm not going to tell my whole story but i used to do a lot of protein and i started smelling like ammonia my kidneys hurt all the time my liver was really really in bad shape um, just based on the blood numbers i have shown the, some of the blood numbers in the past i forget which video that was i'm like i gotta do something and in 2010 i became a certified nutrition coach and this is way before i had gotten over 400 pounds i was actually in really good shape at that point and I had become a, a certified nutritionist. And in this nutrition book, because the company that I got certified from was out of California, so they had this thing called vegan in it. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, where do you get your protein? Like, typical question. But when I was going through all of the, the, the issues, smelling like ammonia, uh, vomiting stomach acid, and everything else that was going along with my keto life, I... I'm like, all right, I, I read about this, uh, the vegan, let me, let me try it out. But I, I couldn't drop the dairy. It was like this addiction that I had to dairy. So finally I dropped the dairy and I'm not kidding. Between 45 and 50 pounds of just sludge came out of me that first month. It, like I, I felt sickly, but I felt great. Like I felt like I should be sickly. Like you should not lose that amount of weight in a month, but I did. And I will never touch dairy again. And that's one of the things that I don't really like that Richard, I mean, he's gone now, but Richard Simmons was pushing the dairy thing. I think if you, if you feel the need, and another thing that he was pushing was fish, 
fish is laden with mercury. I worked in the fish industry. I saw what, what goes on, like the tumors are turned into ca uh, uh, fish cakes and stuff. Like you're eating these tumors and the, the, the mercury and the mercury concentrates in the tumors and it's just, it's, it's bad. So, but if you feel the need, if you feel the need, cause I'm more just basically plant-based, like I'm not out here to harm animals, but if you feel the need to have um, animal protein, like in my mind, beef is the only way to go. Like that's the only way to go. Like chicken, uh, you know, another thing that's that's uh, rise, rose, risen, whatever in a in a lot of countries is the use of chicken. And if you look at French cooking back in the day, they would take out, they would they would reduce. That's what it's called, right? Reduce the the fat of the chicken. Is that what it's called? I, I, whatever, reduce the, the fat of the chicken, and they would throw that out, and they would put butter in, because they knew that the fat from chicken was not good for you. So taking all this into account, there's something, it, it's strange to me how, how this all works. There was something, somebody else that died on that Saturday that was famous, I think that was in the same field. It's kind of it's strange to me how all this stuff happens in threes. I don't know, maybe that's just a, you know, conspiracy nut in me or whatever. I just find it kind of odd when you watch some of the stuff unfold and who's pushing what and how a doctor that was against eating a lot of protein gets in a car accident right outside of his job i think it was and you know it's just i don't know or, or like if you look at uh what's this arnold Errett, it couldn't walk in a pair of shoes of his he they were brand new so all of a sudden brand new shoes you don't know how to walk in so he fell down this and he cracked his head or whatever i don't know I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. It's sad, right? I, I, you cannot find a person to dislike the guy. I, I have no issues. I just, you know, that weird calisthenic stuff or whatever you call it, it just was never for me. I don't know what this video was, but I saw that he died. And then McDougal was, what, two weeks ago? Kind of strange, kind of strange. Anyways, um, you know, it could, you know, it could very well just be that that was their time, which again, I maintain, you cannot undo your life expectancy. I just, I don't think you can. Like people are like, well, yeah, well, if you smoked, like you, that would have been known before you came here. Like everything, an omnipotent being is going to know everything you're going to do before you get here. It just is, it's just the way it is. Like it's like quantum physics and quantum like it is known like you can't fool it anyways uh comments questions down below if you feel like it i don't know what else to add to this i just find it kind of suspicious and if you are somebody who was following richard simmons i would really stay away from dairy oh another thing that they said in one of the write-ups was people in his group were low in vitamin d and I think calcium. And you should know that if you're watching and if you made it this far, that milk does not do your bones any good. It actually leaches from your bones. And the vitamin D that they put in milk is vitamin D2. And there was a doctor, uh, I'm never gonna be able to find it, but if you look in the vitamin D, life expectancy actually decreases with vitamin D2 and it increases with vitamin D3. Again. I don't think you can leave here any other day than you were already going to, but that is it. Anyway, comments, questions down below, like, subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace. In a long lost dream, it's where I'll find you. With the wind blowing through your hair, brings me to my knees.